If you could believe it, it has been 15 days, maybe 16 days, since our last very formal me to you in the camera trash or bash update. Somehow it feels like an eternity, but when you're in it, it feels like no time has passed at all. A paradox? Is that a paradox? Now, the Spindat Trash or Bash 2022 build up, as you know, is brought to you by Park Tool and Pan Eraser. They're the ones that are supplying the prizes for the participants who are building bikes to try and make it to the top five. Without the support of Park Tool and Pan Eraser, there'd be nothing to give to the winners of those putting the effort in to create something cool. Now, me being the organizer, I'm excluded from those prizes, but that's fine. I am still putting a bike together alongside all 20 builders who are currently still in the contest as well as motivation to keep them going. Hence its name, the motivator. As you can see, the paint on the motivator is done. Clear coated, wet sanded, polished and waxed. It's real smooth, except for like the odd area where I did break through the clear coat because when you add so many layers of paint all on top of one another, even two cans of 2K clear coat can't make a thick enough coat to not burn through at some spots. It's fine. Making this happen was a full weekend of thrashing on the trash for the bash. <laughs> and I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with the finished result. Basically all that's left for, for this build now is just, uh, well, it's just to bolt all the stuff that I have onto it, find out what little things I might be missing and then compromise on other things because I've run out of money. Now, this video is not about this. I will do a separate video about the paint. Uh, it'll be really boring, but I will make it because I know a few of you might be interested. What this video is about is all of the builders builds, their submitted updates, and finding out where everybody's at. Starting things off and seemingly getting some traction, finally, Miles Herman who's starting with wheels, 650B wheels, some cool tires, searching for a frame, seemingly has finally found one. The bike that these wheels will be going on to, Miles' mom's old bike. Firm fit and ride back in the day. There's just some time now to make sure that that all is refined, and ready to go by the time that, you know, things get posted up on the website and you, the audience, gets to vote to see who gets to the final five. Up next is Michael Campa, who missed the first update, but has a big one here now showing all the work he's done, cutting bikes apart and putting them together. This is where the bike started. This was a Schwinn, 70 bucks I paid for. And then this was a Novara donator frame. I cut those uh, chainstay seat stays. And then uh, this was the initial build, but I failed, everything was crooked. The welds were ugly, so I ended up cutting it all over again. And then made this into spin that Now this is when I started fabrication. I had already fabricated uh, the frame, some uh, modifications. And you can see everything straight now. The primer, everything. And then as you can see, I changed the head tube into a taper one that I had ordered. Um, now this failed as well because the bearings wouldn't fit so I had to preheat everything and then I ended up removing the paint and then primer all over again and then painted the frame all over again as well. Um, now the bottom bracket got seized in there because of the paint and I ended up having to do this little thingy right here to remove it, welded uh, some rods and just made a cross kind of thing uh, in order to turn around. Finally was able to remove the bottom bracket caps, um, but I burned my paint again. I haven't done anything about it. I just put in the bottom brackets on there, tested everything, fit everything. And this is now where the bike is at. I'm happy with the results. Although I'm not done, I'm getting there. Thanks. Next up is Landon Bannister taking this I forget what the frame is, but creating his own custom fork with 3D printed crown, carbon legs, 3D printed dropouts. Landon is currently waiting for a large shipment of parts. Frame is going to powder coat soon. Wheels have been self-laced, but are going to a shop for tensioning. Up next is high school builder Noah Sullivan and his Trek Multitrack 700. This is my January update of building this Trek Multitrack 700 
that I pulled from a dumpster into the 29er mountain bike of the 90s that never existed. I replaced the outdated wheels and narrow 28C tires with 1.8 inch and 2 inch wide mountain bike tires. To get the front tire to clear the fork, I had to tighten the spokes on one side of the wheel. To make the bike more comfortable, I replaced the original cockpit with a bull moose handlebar. When I first got the handlebar, they had seen better days. Using a few different sanding methods, I got the bars down to a raw finish. Then I used clear coat to keep them from rusting. And to top it all off, I added a front rack that I got for $2 at a garage sale. However, my fork did not have the correct mounting points, so I used some nuts on the hardware to space out the rack. So far, this build has turned out to be even better than I imagined, and I can't wait to see what it will turn into. And now here we have a Facebook stolen update from Dave McGowan. Oh, well, let's see here. What have we got? So, grips, uh, rear brake, uh, I need to go get posts so I can do the front brake. Um, rear brake. Oh, pedals. Pedals are on. Those look nice, right? Nice little brass caps on the square taper cranks, because if you're going to have square tape, you might as well be classy. Um, I have yet to do the helicoil on uh, that bolt right there, right in the middle. Yeah. So. So this is the neat part, right? I haven't started welding yet, but I made a, a rig and it's going to bolt in because I don't have the right uh, setup to weld on aluminum. I'm, I'm fully MIG, not TIG. Um, anyway, but uh, I'll have two bolt-on collars and a weld piece of square tube in between and we'll have a, a, a frame brace. And that'll be nice, right? That'll be beautiful. Anyway, so that was today's pr progress. And yeah, center stand. So, woo, I can do burners once I get the electric going. <laughs> Peter Gehring has his rock hopper set up single speed with a bunch of parts on the way. Up next, builder submitted video Nathan Gascoy. Hi there, Nathan here. My 1989 Diamondback Ascent now looks like this. Since my last update, I've cleaned and filed the inside of the seat tube so that this 1984 height right dropper system slides super smoothly. It was fiddly to fit, but it really pops. I better be careful or- Ow! That's gonna sting. Next, I tried a Shimano bottom bracket with a SRAM adapter, which just got stuck, so I had to fork out for an official GXP bottom bracket, which went on without a hitch, along with the Viva 1 Cranks, Diamondback flat pedals, Apex 1 via Devela, and KMC gold chain. Cue the GCM fist bump and Mr. T thumbnail. Commenters on Instagram and YouTube YouTube seem to want this bike dripping in gold, so I've added valve caps, pedal axle caps and bottle cage bolts to complete this DIY detailing kit for under £15. To whet your appetite for what's to come, I got this front rack from Santa Fixie because let's face it, it would be rude not to make use of these front fork mounts. As the left shifter is redundant on a one by system, I've been looking for a way to make use of it, and my plan now is to continue combining the old and the new by trying to rig this tyre driven 1930s style belt to be actuated by the SRAM shift lever. To follow my build, please check out Trivial Hard, spelled T-R-I at YouTube and Instagram. Monsieur Brody Cooks. Hey everyone, welcome to the nightmare that is the corner of this garage. Um, sorry for my hoarse voice. I'm actually getting over being pretty sick for the last two weeks. So I'm back at it though. I'm uh, still here and kicking. So anyway, I wanted to give you an update on the frame. It's been a whole heap of work, but I'm making progress finally. Uh, as you can see, I stretched the rear triangle. So now it'll fit 130 mil hub. I went ahead and cut out the horizontal um, dropouts that were there. I actually want to do some uh, vertical style dropouts so I welded these in, just kind of made those pieces and cut them, welded them in and uh, went ahead and <laughs> had to do this funny number too that I think I stole from a frame I saw on uh, online somewhere. Anyway, so it clears the, <laughs> it clears the chain ring now and it just barely clears the uh, crank arm. You can see I had to dent this in a little bit but hey whatever. And uh, top tubes welded in place. That's actually a old handlebar from one of my motorcycles. So anyway, this is how it looks so far. Uh, it's definitely got an old clunker kind of vibe, which I'm digging. I think I'm going to run with that. So um, next thing to do is to go ahead and weld on or try to weld on the uh, rear disc brake mount, although I'm not really certain 
exactly what I'm going to do for that. But anyway, stay tuned. Hope you uh, hope you dig it. Thanks. Bruce Chastain. Update number one is the paint job on the frame. It is complete. I did the two-part clear coat, and I would say it turned out decent. Update number two, the next thing I'm doing is I'm getting the bearings and other metal parts cleaned up so I can put them back on the bike. Update number three is the pizza box, and this is the biggest update, did most of the work on. It's actually complete. Pizza comes out, pizza goes in. Door can be closed like that, no problem. And locked with a bungee cord. The bottom part of the cord always stays hooked on the bottom and the top part is easily taken on and off like that. And this whole thing, being that it's pretty heavy, is probably gonna go on the back rack, not the front basket as I mentioned before, so I need to make some kind of mounting system on the bottom. That's it for updates today. Go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com backslash Bruce Chastain for more updates. Now we have Builder Florian Potoff's first Builder submitted update. Hi, I'm Florian Potter from Germany, and this is my uh, Thrasher Bash update for the 30th of January. Uh, since the last update, I have bought a new set of wheels for the bike, uh, and I've converted the bike from a 700C wheel size uh, with 35mm tires to um, a 43mm Panaracer Gravel King on uh, 650B wheels. I've also purchased a um, disc brake adapter, um, which I'm yet to put on the bike because um, it, the dropout is a little bit too uh, thin for it to work properly, so I still have to, to find a solution for that. And yeah, that's how the build is coming along for me, and I've also already test ridden it, and with the new wheel size, uh, with the bottom bracket being a bit lower, and generally it's having a bit more uh, cushioning, I, uh, the bike feels a lot better, but I still have to uh, work something out for the brakes because the clearance for the disc rotors is very uh, small, so yeah, I'm, already, uh, I'm still working on that. Up next, Lucas Barker. This is Lucas Barker checking in for my Trasher Bash build from a Golden, Colorado. There's a little Coors bottle. Here's the bike. Got my new Surly corner bars. Um, not much else has changed. I've got my little BDSM six-pack holder. There's the highway. Um, and we're heading to the base of North Table Mountain, right over here, to a new terrain brewing. Coming up on new terrain. There's North Table, and there's new terrain. I've got my precious cargo secured. Riding along Clear Creek Trail. It's a beautiful day. Chris Nicotera, tell us where you're at with your build. What's up, y'all? This is Chris Nicotera. This is Trasher Bash Update 2. Uh, since the last time we talked, I've really just been riding the bike around, enjoying it. I actually haven't ridden any of my other bikes since I've got this one built. Um, it's a lot of fun. So, you know, trying to avoid stripping it down, getting it ready for paint and all that. But one of the things I wanted to do that I actually did accomplish was to make a mount to hold the brake hose and get that all secured and cleaned up. So I took a little bit of metal and made that. That fits right under where the rack mounts. Good to go. And so after the frame is stripped, I got these stick-on hose guides that I'm just going to smooth in with some JB weld. And hopefully that should look real nice. So I still don't really know what kind of pedals to get. I was looking at what I got on my other bikes. And uh, yeah, I really haven't figured it out yet. We have a problem. But I did figure out what I want to do with the paint. But since I have to do it in the backyard, I'm kind of waiting on the weather to warm up a bit. Terry Rolston and his CCM. Terry has filled the last two weeks with several small repairs and refurbishments and received his first parts bundle so that he could put the bike together and take it for a ride. Realizing the seat is unbelievably uncomfortable and needs replacing, continuing to soldier on, taking measurements of stock geometry, ordering new decals, and creating CAD models for fabrication parts. 
Stefan Pollock hit a bore with his car, therefore uh, couldn't provide an update. However, has modified his star nut so that a front brake cable can go through the steer tube for bar spins, along with fabricating new replacement dropouts for the vertical ones that are on there. And now a short presentation from Andy Amos. Yep. Welcome to the Treasure Bash Madrid entry. End of January report. I'm Andy Amos and my bike is a go. Went on it this morning. The Swiss cheese frame now able to support a water bottle virtually anywhere around it. Uh, hasn't broken yet. I have the Chinese gear shifters and brakes installed. Gear cables and brake cables going to the back and now inside the frame. They were a pain to install. The saddle is temporary, that will change. The front forks seem okay. And the 11 to 34 cassette seems to be all right with the Shimano TZ uh, derailleur. And of course, I have the IXF cranks. Very nice. And finally, Austin Fenn's Dehan folding bike project swapped to BMX bars, still folding up without issue with those bars on and currently in riding condition, although brakeless. And there you go. Now you are up to date on the Trasher Bash contestant builds. There's a link below to a Facebook group where people are posting their build updates between these updates that you can go check out if you want to stay up to date, but also following Trasher Bash 2022 on Instagram. We'll give you all of the updates that come through for the builders using that hashtag. Once again, thank you so much to Park Tool and Panaracer for putting up prizes for the builders of this contest. Obviously, obviously that is super cool. Their site's also linked below. There is but one more update like this before all of the builds are put on spindat.com with photos and write-ups for you, the viewers, to vote on your top five. The next updates, builders, that is your most important one. That is the one where you convince the viewers here and all of the people who've been following your builds to vote for you to go to the final five. Good luck.